Breathe in Space, Fade in Frontier contains adult language and situations, including alcohol use and romantic relationships. This episode contains depictions of gun violence and death. Additional sensory contact warnings can be found in the show notes. I ain't got no home to go to, I ain't got nothing to sell, but my stars will never leave me, even when I'm sold to hell. I was born under a blue sky, and I'll die out in the black. When I'm gone, don't no one mourn me, cause my debts will drag me I like the quiet, but even I have my limits. This is the Blue Lady, Greencast All Local. Anybody in the neighborhood? We hear you, Blue Lady. What is your status? I'm breathing fine, but drifting. I can't get my reactor to bootstrap. But who is this? I don't see your transponder signal. We have located your scope, Blue Lady. Do you require assistance? I wouldn't turn some away if it came knocking. Normally I'd limp home on the RCS alone, but I got a Bronco stuck in the macerator. Can't dislodge it and can't process it without power. And with the extra mass, I don't have the Delta V to get back to Walden Station without the reactor running. I see the asteroid in your bay. That would definitely pose a problem. Are you backline capable? Uh, yeah. Not that I use it much. Are y'all military or something? We will continue this over more secure channel. Switching green to black now. Shoot. How do I... Blue Lady, are you there? I'm here. I think I've got the sentence right. Can you hear me? Reading you five by five. This is the peregrination hardship. Fly high and far. Harry's? Shoot, I didn't even know y'all were there. My apologies. As we are reasonably certain you are where you appear to be, we are now maneuvering to intercept you to assist. How many are aboard? Hmm, just me. I'm Terrence, by the by. But everybody calls me Slick. A pleasure to meet you, Slick. I am Lieutenant Commander Bronzepouse. I have one of my engineering team here as well. You would like to ask you some questions while we complete the rendezvous. Fire away. This is Commander Camden Skin. I can see by your silhouette that your ship is a Mitchell Hyundai Knox cart. Are you still running the original reactor system? Nah. She was stripped twice and sold for scrap before she came to me. Just about nothing's original. I had a Zurek VX1 put in on series. Cost twice what the hull did, but that's bonded mechs for you. Uh, the VX1s are fairly robust. I'm surprised you're having trouble. Me too. 
The gauges say she's been duke flooded, but I flushed the system twice and took a manual reading at the manifold, and the mix is fine. Pressure is in the black, caps are full of charged. I can't tell you why she won't cooperate. Some of the second gen Zurichs can have a problem with magnetic resonance. When was the last time you were degaussed? It's been a bit. Shoot, that's probably it. I guess I could run a loop of cable and... Uh... The fly has a DMF on board. We should be able to get you running again. You just carry around a degaussing rig? We like to be prepared. I'm going to prep an exo team. Wake the captain if anything develops. Sure, be safe out there. When we get you flying, will you be all right? How are you for FNF? Water? Air? Heck, it's just me, and I was planning on being out here for another two or three weeks. With reserves. So unless you've got a stash of orthopedic shoes, I'm pretty well set and mighty grateful in any case. Orthopedic shoes? I had a run-in with a buck and bronco a while back. Left leg's vac grown. Off the rack, though, not custom. Two shades lighter and an inch shorter than the other one. Not a problem out here in the black, but it put me in spin gravity, and I'm a bit off kilter. I'm sorry to hear that. No worries. What size and lift do you require? Now, I'm not going to sit you on a goose chase looking we for... We keep an eclectic supply on hand and may have something that will work for you. Please, indulge me. Standard size 8 wide, 2.2 centimeter lift, with a G-top or bayonet suit lock, if you've got one. I will see what we have. Thank you. It looks like we have an ET of about 45. Then the commander can start at the gossing. Jeez, y'all really are close by. I guess the black's not so empty these days. While we wait, would you tell me about this bucking bronco? If the memory isn't too painful, of course. Oh, no, this is a good one. Is it? You bet. So it's about two years back and I'm wrangling this centaur. Beautiful beast. You could see the platinum veins running through it with your bare eyes. Only, it turns out, it had been fractured by tidal forces. I saw the cracks, of course, but I figured they didn't run all the way through. What I didn't see were the old tethers still barely holding this thing together at the seams. I think that somebody else must have been out at the same rock and must have quit the job before they realized it was split clean down the middle. And you didn't realize? Not a whit. So I sling my own tethers, but only on one side, see? And like an idiot, I am way too close when I start reeling it in. The two halves pull apart, and them old tethers act like springs and snap the thing back together like this. Little rocks go flying and I go ass over tea kettle. Grab the first thing that comes to hand and plant my feet on the rock to brace myself. But the reel is still pulling, and as luck would have it, I plant one foot right in a crack just as it opens up and then... It snaps down on my leg like a 40 ton stone alligator. I will spare your delicate ears for me describing the sound it made, but I will never forget it. Hiya. Must have hurt. Nah. I pulled my leg out of the jaws of that rock, and you want to know what my first thought was? What? I think, well, now I've got to wrangle this bronco, or else I'm up a certain creek with no paddle to pay to fix this mess. <laughs> I mean, I was right, but that's still a hell of a thought to have when part of you is just being squished. It shows that you're a very practical man. Did you manage to wrangle it, as you say? Darn tootin'. With the auto dock and my suit flashing warning lights at me the whole time. I slapped every tether I had between those chunks and fed that bronco into the blue lady like a string of spaghetti. And she chewed it right up. <laughs> Hauled the ore back to Walden with every coagulant pack I had slapped on my leg. Used the payout to buy a replacement. And now when I'm in port I tell all the newbies to check the rocks thoroughly. Or else they'll end up all lopsided like old slick. I don't know if you're brave or... Foolish to be out here on your own like this. If anything, I'd gone worse. Oh, I work better alone. People and I, we don't tend to get on so well after a little while. I mean, it's nice to talk, but things don't work out long term. Sounds lonely. I like it this way. How about y'all? Big crew over there? Ah, not too big. Couple of hundred. Couple of hundred? Yeesh. Terran naval ships don't have crews that big. Others have the luxury of living on moons and stations. We do not. Oh, yeah. Sorry. It is quite alright. 
You mentioned this Walden Station several times. I've never been. What's it like? Oh, it's a nice enough place. Good spot to unload your gear and kick your feet up for a few days. Can't say it's too special, but the folks are all right. The lady is purring like a mother cat now. Tell your Camden's kin that he knows his reactors. He needs no reminding, I assure you. <laughs> I know the type. I should start a burn for Walden Station, sell my load, and let the mechs give the old girl a once-over for her, keep her in the black too much longer. Are y'all sure I can't offer you something for the help and the gear? I can't believe you had a compatible boot for me. What are the odds? We require no payment, Slick. If you feel you owe us anything, then if ever you do business with us or another ship of ours, then I believe the term is the friends and family rate. Don't feel like you have to, of course, though. Aw, oh, heck. At least I could do. Put down in your ledger books that old slick calls you one and we'll square up one day. Thanks again. Blue lady out. Fly high and far out. I can't believe you stayed on the comms with him the entire time, Leah. I could tell that he was a type comforted by the sound of his own voice. We are required to give aid to those in trouble, and lending an ear to a scared man is certainly that. Your ears are stronger than mine. I only lasted an hour before turning off the comms in my suit. And yet you somehow found exactly the very specific item he needed. Uh, the fabric did all the work. It cost us very little and will make his life easier. I'm just saying. Do not act so cynical with me, Commander. Point taken. At any rate, we should be moving again. Set a walking course away from the vector of our friend. Hi, aye. First shift will be starting soon. They can handle today's quota, I think. How many ships do you think we've helped like that one? Since I joined the fly... A dozen, maybe two. That sounds about right. And we have how many hearth ships all told? And the free traders do even more than we do. For decades now. We hide and we avoid and we help. Thousands of little times like today. Getting a little philosophical all of a sudden, hey? Do you think if we help enough, we could stop hiding? Maybe, but that's not why we should keep doing it. Yes, of course. But maybe. Shift ends in five. Officially, I'm in charge for that, but in reality, I'm going to be taking a shower. Hi, aye. A-Y-N-I approach. This is RM-63F Open Sky, checking in at Vector 4 Alpha Mark 6. Request approach confirmation. Scanner contact. RM-63F Open Sky, you are cleared for approach at Vector 4 Alpha Mark 6 to Base 774. Confirm? Confirmed. How was the run, Cal? Anything interesting out there? Nah, just a bunch of broken down ships flown by hard-headed free haulers with more ego than sense. So, standard circuit of belt shipping route row? Yep. Docking sequence initiated. Confirm? Confirmed. How about here? Amala have her baby yet? Last week. Boy, bit over three and a half kilos and a head full of hair. Teclan swears the two of them haven't slept since. How's it feel to have grand progeny? Couldn't love the little bastard more if I tried. Maul and I are thinking... Docking complete. Open sky, you are down. Landing clamps engaged. I'll try to run by and see him before I ship out again. Do that. I think Amal is feeling lonely. It'll do her good. Right. Landing confirmed. Open sky out. Hey, 
Amelia came and got her before she got herself in too much trouble, but still. I can't just keep ignoring it. It was the fourth time this month. I'm worried about her, Cal. But, you know, Anna Karen, she's just gonna say she's fine and stay the fuck out of her business. I don't think she's gone back to the doctor since she got diagnosed. Amelia won't say anything, but I can tell she's doing crazy. You're sure it's MLM? Yeah. Told me herself last time she got shit-faced. Manus Cassia Myelitis. Even if she didn't, you can see it, Cal. She's gotta get help. I, I heard there are drugs now that can stop you from getting worse if- Yes. Okay. I'll swing by while I'm dirt side. No promises, though. I don't know if I can get her to listen either. Chaos. She'll listen. Maybe because she knows she'd wear herself out running at you before you gave way. Bullheaded. The both of you. Chaos Andreev. That's not my name. I knew it was you. What's it been? Ten years. You're mixing me up with someone else. Sure I am. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, what's your name, friend? Is guy bothering you, Cal? You want me to 86 him? It's fine. I got it. I'll talk to Anna Karen, and I got my drink. You got other customers to take care of. You sure? Yep. Sure is a surprise running into you. It's been, what, ten years since we've been breathing the same air? Eight years. Yeah, eight. Sounds about right. So, how you doing, Chaos? I told you. That isn't my name. Right, right. What you going by this time? I think you should keep moving, Moriarty. There's nothing for you here. Come on, you're not still mad about the thing on Raven Station, are you? That was ages ago. Eight years. You can't blame me for that. It's your own fault you got caught. Wasn't going to do any good for me to get pinched to. Couldn't have been too bad. You look like you're all in one piece now. Yeah, not too bad. Pulling a long con here? Who's the mark? As far as I can tell, this rock don't produce nothing but gallium, glycine, and gulls. And none of them look like they're hoarding a fortune. Don't do that kind of work anymore, Moriarty. Five years on diatoma has a way of changing a person's outlook. Diatoma? The prison? That's where you ended up? Tough break, tough break. Uh, still, could have been worse. Five years just flies by. Did for me. But come on now. You're going to tell me the great chaos Andrea of confidence trickster of the stars just left the game? That's about the size of it. Mm-hmm. Sure, you settled down, got yourself a house, a yard, maybe even a spouse. Sounds real cozy. But come on, what angle are you really working? I was telling you the truth. Right. Got it. If you ain't working an angle, what are you doing here? Don't tell me you bought into a sugar farm. Got a ship. Doing a circuit run through the local shipping lanes. Rescue ships fix things up around here when they break. <laughs> things always break. <laughs> a hero. Never thought I'd see the day you did an honest day's labor. When'd you turn mechanic? Diatoma's a real good teacher. If the inmates don't fix it, it doesn't get fixed. No one's going to send a tech down there. So I learned. Was that her smother? Or starve? That sounds real terrible. Well, guess I'm settling in for a decent stay. How many of these rubes you think I can hit before they get wise? Or maybe I can get out clean. You up to play shill? Looks like they know you around here. We could clean up and they'd be none the wiser. Travel the system in style. They aren't Marks Moriarty. <laughs> sure they are. Unless they got a lot more under the surface than they do on top. Goddamn. You've gone and got all pulpy on them. I don't believe it. Chaos Andreev turned mush over a bunch of nem-eating, methane-snorting, slack-jawed roiders. Shut your goddamn mouth. Oh, I didn't mean anything by it. Just that the chaos I know would have died rather than pitch their lot in with these dust mites. You left that person behind on Raven Station in a holding cell. I thought we agreed what's past is past. Now, like I was saying, nice as this reunion is, I'm here to work. How many you think I can- No. What? 
No, you're not going to work here. Why the hell not? Because this is my home and these are my people. Oh, sure, sure. I see how it is. Just, how do you think your people would take to finding out they got a living, breathing convict in their midst? You threatening me? Nah, nah, don't take it the wrong way. Just talking. Stop talking, get moving. Don't think I will. I'm starting to get comfortable. Moriarty, I'm warning you. What are you going to do, Chaos? Oh, I'm sorry, Cal. Sit your ass back down. You can't do nothing to me unless you want that past of yours to be public knowledge. And it seems like you really don't want that. You wouldn't. You owe me, Moriarty. How'd you figure? I took the fall for you. Did five years on a hellhole of an asteroid in a barely functional dome. And I never flipped. You think it wouldn't have helped turning you in? Think it wouldn't have got me somewhere? But I didn't do it. Guess you were always pulpy then. You were my friend. Sure. I was your friend all the way till trouble caught up. Then the only friend I need is me. And that's how it's always gonna be. That's how it is everywhere, Cal. People are out for themselves, and they'll do whatever they got to do to come out on top. No, they care about each other. They take care of each other. Really? How much you want to bet? Community takes care of community. And you think you're community? I... Yes. I've helped them. Made myself useful here. Sure. And you're one of them until you're not useful anymore. These people here? Your people? You think they'd have your back if trouble came knocking? You think they'd give a salvager's damn about you then? I... Take it from me, Chaos. Ain't no such thing as family in the belt. Just people looking out for themselves and to hell with the rest. I don't mind. How's business? Well, same old, Eddie. Uh, the usual? How long you touch down? Yeah, thanks. Couple days. Range wanted to see the husband. You know how it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how's Rhonda? And the girls? They're, uh, what now? Seven and eight. Driving their mom and me crazy. So you gonna help me fleece this rock or not? No. What? No. I'm not going to help you take advantage of these people. Guess I'm gonna have to break the news about their useful little mechanics history then. Do it. What? Tell them. Maybe they chase me off. Maybe who I was is too much. Maybe they won't be able to trust me and I'll have to ship off. Start over somewhere else. But I've done it before and I can do it again. But maybe not. Maybe this place is a community. Either way, I'll know where I stand. Can't believe you, Chaos. Gonna throw your life away because you can't look out for number one. Again. Well, your funeral. Good afternoon, everyone. May I have your attention, please? Over here, please. My name is Aloysius Moriarty. I am but a simple traveler of these stars who has found himself temporarily at rest on your beautiful home. It grieves me deeply that I must be the bearer of ill news. This individual, this person here has been deceiving you, lying to you, abusing the good nature of this community. Cow? What's this about? Who is this guy? The person you know as Cal is in fact none other than Chaos Andreev, confidence trickster, swindler, and former inhabitant of the Diatoma prison asteroid. Did you hear me? They are a criminal. A thief. They have made off with people's livelihoods. That true, Cal? Yeah. See, I discovered this information and just had to warn. You've been here for three years. Don't think you've ever so much as shortchanged someone on a repair, much less rip them. You planning on changing that anytime soon? No. Well, good. Then, far as I'm concerned, that's settled. What? I said that's settled. But they, they've been gaining your trust, infiltrating your community for their nefarious and avaricious purposes. 
Are you, Cal? No. Good, because you haven't talked to Anna Karen yet, and the ice maker in the back just went on the fritz. So if you could hold off pulling your big heist till after you got that taken care of, I'd appreciate it. Sure. I can get to that later, after I check on Anna. I don't... Didn't you all hear me? Sure, but see, I don't know you from Adam. Yeah, and Cal? They saved my neck more times than I can count. Wouldn't have to if you'd stop buying salvage. Shove it. So where I'm standing, looks like you're just looking to cause trouble. What do you think, John Mark? I think they've been sitting over there for half an hour now, Cal looking like they're ready to spit nails. So yeah, causing trouble. But I have information. I can prove. Mm-hmm. Now why don't you go on and get? Who are you to tell me where I can and cannot be? The place's owner. You heard the lady. Get. You're not getting served here. Nor anywhere else on Unomia once I get the word round. You don't know who you're insulting. I have connections. Ties. Sure you do. Now get out. What he said about who I used to be. It's true. All of it. Eh, figured. I'll get packed. I can be space side by noon. Now why the hell would you do that? I'm... I've done some really terrible things. I should... Shove it, Cal. Anyway, like I said, I need you to fix the ice maker. And God knows you're the only one that Anna will listen to. So sit your ass down, have a drink, and then get back to work. We need you here. Besides, a place like this? Just stuck on the side of this rock with imported air? We gotta work together if we want to make it. Gotta be more than a community. Right, John Mark? Gotta be a family. I never wanted to come back to Palace, but I had a job that needed doing. And when you're at Raven Station, there's only one place to get a drink. If I had any luck, maybe she wouldn't be there. I'm not the kind of girl to whimper or whine. I never knew Shit. There she is. The love of my life. Maybe if I leave now, she won't have noticed me? Feeling before Oh shit Till Mr. Lonesome Knocked at my okay. door Okay, no chance of that Might as well get that drink then Well, well, well If a cold wind ain't blowing into my bar Didn't think we'd see your sorry ass again, Cal Didn't think I'd be back on this sorry rock either, Lance Give me a two-step and hurry I'd like a head start before Maeve's done on stage Good luck. Kel, you miserable bitch. Now, Maeve. Lance, give me something to throw in her face. I can see you're mad. So let me start by apologizing. Mad? This isn't mad. I moved past being mad two years ago. What you see before you is fury. Look, you knew the deal from the start. I didn't have a choice. Here you go. Now, see here! You didn't have a choice? What are you, some sort of robot? You say it's just a job? They're all just jobs, Kel. Unless that's what we were, too. Just a job. You were very helpful there, Lance. (laughs) You two always made for a good show. Did you have to give her a glass of whacker? Stings my eyes. Like I'd let her waste the good stuff on you. At least that band-aid is ripped off now. I can get back to the job. Still walking dogs. Scooping shit all over the solar system. What kind of dog brings you to a place like Palace? The usual. A client lost something. 
wants it found. Well, Raven's a small station. Not many places to look. If I want to give Maeve some breathing room, where should I avoid? Mm, Her room's still down on C, C41. If she's not there, she's here, singing or working the tables. Thanks. And thanks for the one drink, not the other. I tipped Lance well. I always tip well. It pays back in a lot of little ways. He was right about Raven Station. Just a waypoint. A stop along a lot of journeys. Nobody stays here. A big enough ship docks and it just about doubles the population. If my quarry was still here, it shouldn't take that long to find. And if it had already gone? Well, it was nice to see Maeve again at least. I found a quiet corner and logged my terminal into the local network, read my messages, and looked over the info my client had sent me. Two weeks ago, the ship that held my quarry had moored at Raven 3F. It left, 12 hours later. The courier pilot said it was just a stop for F and F. But the package wasn't on board when the ship arrived at Luna, so Palace was the only option. I checked in next at the local ranger station. Rangers don't usually mind me. Let me keep my peace on me with the right mix of bribes and flirting. This time it was mostly bribe. The ranger spotted me as a dog walker right away, asked me some pointed questions about my client and business. Took a monkey's fist of credits to put a stop to that, and then another to get me a look at the station's records. No cameras, sadly. But the courier had come aboard with a package and didn't have it when they left. They dropped it with somebody, or somebody took it. I had myself a little sniff around the station. I do a lot of finding things in this line of work. Sometimes that's valuables, like today. Sometimes that's people. Sometimes it's info. Either way... There's always some sort of trail. This one I picked up at the local government offices. Local gov types make it their business to stick their noses into all sorts of things, and they gab like washerwomen if you get them going. Throw a small-time mayor a few compliments and choice jokes, but not too good, and they'll unhinge the tops of their heads and tell you everything you want to know about their little patch of the world. A high-G courier coming through. That was big news. Talk of the station. And the pilot had come board too. Even spent the night. That was enough to send the rumor mill churning. And then, my heart sank. As the room that the courier pilot had been seen coming out of was C-41. Well, that about made all the sense in the world. It is a small station, after all. I took a walk out to the ship moorings and thought. If Maeve had the package, well, things were going to get complicated. Quick. Maybe I should just get back in my ship and head out. I could tell the client there was no trail. I'd lose the money for sure, but there are other jobs out there. Then, well... Something about that didn't seem right. Why should I let my own baggage stop me cold like that? Think, Kel. There's more than one way to strip a Bronco. Lance here. I was thinking of swinging by for another drink on my way out, but... You know. Is she there? Came back a few minutes ago. Still fuming. I'd steer clear if I were you. Gotcha. Thanks, buddy. See you around, then. Okay. Coast should be clear, then. I made my way over to the residential section and found the right room. C-41. Here's a secret. Most locks are only there to dissuade the casual. If somebody wants in, they get in. Maeve's room was... Just like I remember. A single Spartan room with absolutely nothing that wasn't either necessary for life, 
bed, dresser, terminal, sink with toiletries, were too precious to do without. A picture of her parents when she was little, a vintage stereo, and a small collection of music. My heart damn near stopped when I saw the dress. The memory of her in that dress was... Well, if I go to my grave with a single image burned into my head, I hope it's that one. Truth be told, there weren't that many places to hide something as big as my quarry. Under the bed was too obvious. Same with the dresser. Taking the back panel off the terminal was easy, and... There it was. A 30 by 30 square. I flipped the latch just to be sure. Slipped a glimpse of cold. There was someone standing behind me. Guess I got a little distracted. That's a rookie mistake. Instinct said to go for my piece at the small of my back. But I know better than to listen to instinct. Bracing myself, I put on my winningest smile and turned to Maeve. Her eyes burned into me from the doorway, a pair of stiletto heels dangling from one hand. This was pretty inevitable, wasn't it? <sighs> In hindsight, yes. Blindingly obvious. I knew what you were after the moment I saw your face here. Overheard you talking to Lance, knew you'd be here. And I should have known the moment I heard the word palace that it'd be you. The only notable thing about this rock is you. It's a bit late for flattery. A bit late for a lot of things. Not too late to turn things around. It's just a job. For you, maybe. For me, it's a goddamn ticket out of this place. You stole this! And the person before stole it from the person before who stole it from the person before. It's thieves all the way down, beautiful. But now I, I have to- Have to what? Turn me in? Pull your damn gun on me, and if I resist, you're going to shoot me? Maeve. Just leave it. Tell whoever is pulling your leash that it's gone. This is what I do. People have a problem, they come to me, and I fix it. It's what I always do. Why? Why do these jobs always come first? Why can't you just live your own life for once, solve your own problems? Because it's the only thing I'm good at. You sing because you can, and the universe is all the better because you do. I do this because I'm no good at anything else. I can think of another thing you're pretty good at. Takes two to do that. When did she get so close? I really ought to back off. This isn't smart. I shouldn't let myself get distracted like this. Shouldn't let my guard down. Oh, shit. I forgot how good she smells. And feels. Yeah, okay. This is a mistake I'm willing to make. You two always made for a good show. Hands up, dog walker. I know you're olden. Make a move, and I shoot you both. Lance, don't try this. What? You two are so eager over whatever it is Maeve stole off that courier. So eager that over here in one call from you lights her engine so hot she leaves behind a Maeve-shaped cloud of dust. So whatever it is, it's gotta be worth a bundle. Now it's gonna be mine. You're not getting away with this. I don't see why not. It's a clear path from here to the Morins. I'll just help myself to Miss Dogwalker's ship and be on my way. Now, hand over the goods. I lifted the package in one hand and held Maeve tight with the other. Maybe if I was quick, I could get her behind me before he could get both of us. I tried to work the odds, but then I felt Maeve's hand moving. Oh, small of my back. Good girl. You want it? Here you go. Ah. Oh shit. Oh shit. Right. That'll do. Maeve, grab the goods. We gotta move. 
Kel, I... You don't have time to grab much, and we're not coming back. We? You don't need a ticket off this station. I, I have a ship. If you'll come. Yeah, of course. Why didn't you ask last time? Stupid mistake not to. Kel, your arm. It's fine. Let's just go. Okay, okay, here. Hold this, and I'll take the package. The dress? Good choice. Oh, now you have time to talk. I jammed the door shut, and we made a beeline for the moorings. Traffic control didn't much like me taking off in a hurry, but nothing a little bribery and flirting couldn't fix. We needed to be a distant memory when the rangers on Raven Station found Lance's body. Should be clear by now. Thanks again. Wasn't the first time I saved your ass. What's the plan now? Oh, I'm the one making the plan? You got all take charge back there. Good look on you. You're the one who rightfully stole it. Your call. Hmm. I'm not even sure it's real. Maybe. Easier to make something like that than fly all the way out and get it. I guess it doesn't matter as long as people want it. <sighs> I should have grabbed the stereo. Why? This thing's a recording. We could have played it at least. Bunch of image data and whale song. You know what I'd rather hear? Oh, all right. I've got the blues for home, sweet home. And I feel so kind of all alone. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Breathing Space, Fading Frontier. The first segment of this episode, Bootstrap, was written, directed, and edited by Scott Paladin. Slick was voiced by Scott Paladin. Ron Spouse was voiced by Cam Clark. Camden Skin was voiced by Quill Turner, with additional voice work by Sean Geddes and Jeremiah. The second segment of this episode, Badger Game, was written and directed by Lisa Guente and edited by Eric Seguente. Cal is voiced by Vanessa Haas. John Mark Cassipang was voiced by James. Aloysius Moriarty was voiced by Sean Geddes. Addy was voiced by Paige Elena. The final segment of this episode, Hello Again from Raven Station, was written, directed, and edited by Scott Pallet. Kel was voiced by Erica Kaiser. Lance was voiced by Scott Paladin. Maeve was voiced by M. German. Our theme, Blues for the Black, was composed by Michael Fratog with vocals by Jeremiah and lyrics by Scott Pallet. You can find links to learn more about our cast and crew in the show notes and more information about our show at our website, breathingspace.lawofnames.com. Breathing Space Fading Frontier is a Law of Names production. <laughs>